This is the day which the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is our Bible lesson for day 11. It's Tuesday, April 14th. Um, the first thing we're going to do today is review our Bible um, verse. Remember, this is the first commandment. We're going to learn all ten commandments. This is the first one. This is found in the book of Exodus. You can find Exodus in your Bible. It's the second book of the Bible, right? Genesis, Exodus. Okay? So Exodus chapter 20, verse 3. Exodus 23. It says, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. I want you to repeat after me. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Okay? Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Now, remember I told you yesterday that that meant that God doesn't want us to have anything in our life that has a better or more important place than Him. Because He has um, done everything for us and given us everything. And through Him, salvation comes. And so we should not have anything or anybody in our life that's more important than God. That's what this Bible verse is telling us. And that's why we see that little G right there to say God's meaning other things cannot save us. Only God can save us, and He needs to be the most important thing in our life. Well, we talked last week about the crucifixion and the resurrection. Can you remember who the first person was that got to see Jesus after He rose from the dead? You know? It was Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene is the same one that um, worshipped Jesus by breaking open the bottle. Lazarus and Martha's sister, and she was the first one to get to see Jesus. And she ran back to tell the disciples, but no one else was able to see Jesus. Only she had seen him. Well, later that afternoon, there was a couple walking down the road. They call this the Emmaus Road. There was this couple walking down the road, um, probably husband and wife. The Bible tells us that this woman was Jesus' mother's sister. So, of course, that would be her aunt. And so, Jesus was walking, Jesus appeared walking down the road with them. And they were thinking about all of the events that had happened over the weekend with Easter. And some people had said they had seen Jesus alive and that his tomb was empty, but not anybody had seen him but Mary Magdalene. And their hearts were thinking about all of these things. And as their hearts were thinking about all of these things... As their hearts were thinking about all of these things, Jesus came alongside of them. And when Jesus came alongside of them, he began to speak with them. Now, um, they did not know that it was Jesus. And that blows my mind that they didn't recognize him. But they didn't know that it was Jesus. And they walked along the whole way. And they were speaking of the events that had happened in Jerusalem that weekend. And Jesus was talking to them about... Um, about so many things in the Bible. And as they got closer to their home, they said, please come and have dinner with us. They still didn't know who he was. They said, please come and have dinner with us. And as they sat down to have dinner with him, they, um, as they sat down to have dinner with him, they um, were breaking bread and having a meal together. And his, um, suddenly, the Bible tells us that they realized who he was. And when they realized who he was, that he just disappeared out of their sight. And they said, didn't our hearts burn within us? We knew, we knew that Jesus could be near us, but they just didn't realize who he was until the moment when the moment when they realized who he was, he disappeared. And then they ran seven miles back to Jerusalem to tell the disciples, Mary Magdalene had seen Jesus, but we've seen Jesus too. He appeared to us. It's true. He has risen from the dead. And so all of the disciples are excited and ready to see Jesus again. Later that night, they were in a room together. And you can see here, the window here is shut. The doors were locked. And the reason the window was shut and the doors were locked was because, um, because the reason the windows were shut and the doors were locked was because they were afraid for their life because Jesus had been crucified by the um, Jewish leaders and they didn't know if they would come after them too. So they were in this room and the doors were locked and the window was shut and the Bible says that Jesus just appeared in the room with them 
and that all of the people were amazed and that they could see, and it's hard to see in this picture, but they could see the marks in his hands where he had died on the cross for their sin. The Bible says that there was one person that was not in the room with them, and that was Thomas. And when they said later to Thomas, Thomas, we've seen Jesus. He's alive. Thomas said, I won't believe it. I do not believe that Jesus is alive. And Jesus said, and Thomas said, I will not believe it unless I can actually touch the scars in his hands in the place in his side where he has these scars. I won't believe that Jesus is alive. Isn't that crazy? All of these people said, we've heard Jesus alive. And even Jesus said, I'll rise again from the dead. And Thomas said, I can't believe it. Well, eight days later, they were in that same room together again. And this time Thomas was with them. And Jesus appeared to them and Jesus said, look, behold my hands and my side, the scars that I have. He said, I am Jesus. And Thomas bowed down and said, my Lord and my God, how foolish Thomas must have felt to have said, I have to see his wounds before I'll believe. Well, Jesus was there and he said, you know, blessed are you, Thomas, because you have seen, but blessed are they who have not seen, but still believe. Did you know when he spoke that, he was speaking of us? Because we haven't actually seen Jesus risen from the dead, but I believe that he's alive. Do you? And so the Bible says, blessed are they which have not seen, but do believe. Now, let me ask you a question. Maybe you're listening to Mrs. Zimmerman's Bible stories, or you remember being in school, or I've been listening to stories on Easter Sunday, and you say, I don't know that I have believed on Jesus Christ. Well, Jesus wants to live in your heart. He died on the cross to take away your sin so that he could live in your life. And if you haven't trusted him as Savior, I hope that you'll ask your mom and dad about that. Or you could call Miss Zimmerman. Miss Zimmerman could help you with that. If you have trusted him as Savior, I hope that you're living for him, that you're praying to him, that you're asking him for help each day. All right. I'll catch you next for math.